Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to get the stocks alpha and beta in Excel and I'm going to go through two methods to do it. The first one uses the slope and intercept functions in Excel and the second one uses the regression analysis in Excel and that will give us alpha and beta in addition to regression diagnostics. I'll also briefly go through what alpha and beta are using both CAPM and the single index model just so that we know what the regression is going to ultimately look like. When we're referring to alpha and beta, what exactly do we mean? Well, to look at this, we need to start off with the capital asset pricing model. The CAPM basically asserts that the return on the stock is equal to the risk-free rate plus the firm's beta multiplied by what's called the market risk premium, which is the difference between the returns on the market index and the returns on the, on the risk-free rate. The beta here represents the sensitivity and responsiveness of the stock's returns to returns on the market index. Oft times we need to estimate the beta. One way to estimate the beta is by looking at what's called the single index model. The single index model essentially asserts that the returns for the, for the stock rather are equal to the alpha, which here is an intercept in a linear regression, plus the firm's beta multiplied by the returns on the market index, plus a residual. The residual here represents the random movements on any given day that might be experienced by the stock. The alpha and beta here are basically the regression coefficients. The alpha is the intercept, the beta is the slope. Therefore, we're going to be able to estimate those relatively easily in Excel using built-in functions in Excel, which is what we're going to do next. Here we are in Excel, and what we have is a time series of data for the market index and for one company being the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, with its ticker being CBA. The market index here is the S&P ASX 200, which is an index representing the largest 200 stocks on the Australian Stock Exchange. I have data here for all of 2020 up until the present. So at the moment, we have this going up until October. Here as well, I have the returns for the market index and the returns for Commonwealth Bank. What we are then able to do is calculate R from beta. There's two easy ways to do this. The first easy way to do this is by using the inbuilt slope and intercept functions in Excel. So here, what we can do is we can get the intercept, which is basically going to be the intercept in our regression. And this is relatively easy to do using the built-in Excel function. So the function is intercept. And then what we need to do is we're going to need to fill in all of the data that we need for our regression. So our known Ys here would be the returns for Commonwealth Bank. The known Xs would be the returns for the market index. That's because here, we're basically asserting that the returns on Commonwealth Bank will be a function of the returns on the market. What you will notice is the intercept here is extremely close to zero. Excel will have this notation when a uh, value is extremely close to zero. We can move this as well and reorganize the formatting of it. And what you'll see is the intercept is extremely small. That is exactly what you would expect. That's because if there were a persistently positive or negative alpha, arbitrageurs would arbitrage it away and get riskless profits if the alpha were to persist being positive or negative for an extended period of time. We can also get the slope here. The slope is going to be the beta. This is because in our linear regression model, the beta represents the slope of our regression. So we can do this just using the slope function in Excel. Again, relatively straightforward. We need to input unknown Ys. Here, again, our returns on Commonwealth Bank unknown Xs. Here again are returns on the market index. And then it's filled in much the same way as with the intercept function. And this is then going to give us our slope. What you'll observe here is the slope here is approximately 1.19, i.e. just a little bit over 1. That again is consistent with what you would expect. For a major bank, you would expect its beta to be approximately 1 or maybe a little bit more depending on the risk level at any given point in time. And during 2020, it has been a relatively volatile year, so therefore you would expect a relatively high beta for a bank of this type. So that's the most straightforward way to get R from beta. You can also do it by using the analytics that are built into Excel. To do it using the analytics, you would need to go to data. Then you would need to go to data analysis. Then under data analysis, you will find regression, and you can use the inbuilt regression function in Excel. If you do not see data analysis, what you would need to do is you would need to go to File, then you would need to go down to the very bottom, 
and here you will see more or you will see options depending on how yours is set up. In my case, I'll click more and then I'll click on options. After doing this, I would then go to add-ins. And then under add-ins, what I'll see is manage add-ins at the very bottom here. I can then click go to manage the Excel add-ins. And I would select the analysis tool pack, which will give me the inbuilt regression function in Excel. Because it is already installed, I can cancel out of this. I'll then go to data analysis. Then, as before, I'll go down to regression and click OK. Then with that in mind, I can input my Y range and my X range and get various options here. So my Y range, as before, will be the returns on Commonwealth Bank. I'll just select that whole time series here. My input X range is going to be the returns on the market index. Again, I'll just input that whole X range here. You can input or specify that the data you've selected has labels, and you can also request various other things such as a confidence level, which I'm going to leave blank at the moment. You can force the constant to be zero. In that case, they would force our alpha to be zero rather than letting Excel determine it through ordinary regression means. You can then also specify which worksheets you want it to be output into. I'll just leave this as default into a new worksheet. I'm also not going to select labels because here I did not select labels as part of the data that I selected. I am not going to force the constant to go through zero because ordinarily that creates econometric problems. If you want, you can also request the residuals be given to you. This can enable you to calculate things such as idiosyncratic risk if you would like to do so. You can also request various plots such as residual or line fit plots, and you can request normality plots. I am not going to request those at this stage. However, it's an option if you would like to perform regression diagnostics. I will then click OK. This will then output my regression data or my regression results into a separate worksheet. What you will see here is in the top bit, you have regression statistics. Then you have an ANOVA table, which for our purposes is not going to be particularly informative other than maybe looking at the F statistic. And then in the bottom table, what you will see here is the coefficients. So the intercept being our alpha, and then the X variable one, which is basically going to be our slope or our beta, i.e. the coefficient on our X variable being the market index. So in terms of the regression statistics, the main thing to get out of this is the adjusted R squared, which in our case is almost 80%, telling us that quite a lot of the variation in the returns on Commonwealth Bank is explained by the returns on the market index. The F statistic here is statistically different from zero, telling us that our coefficients are jointly statistically significant. The alpha here is again very close to zero, and that is exactly the same as the alpha we got using the intercept function. Similarly, the beta, the exact same as we got using the intercept function in Excel. You can also check the p-values. The p-values tell you whether the particular thing is statistically different from zero. The p-value for our alpha is approximately 0.97. That tells us that it would not be statistically different from zero. The p-value for our beta is extremely close to zero. That tells us that it would be statistically significantly different from zero. However, we are not testing here whether the beta is statistically different from one, rather we're testing whether it is different from zero. In a further table, I've outputted the regression, uh, the residual results. The residuals, of course, are going to tell us the random portion of returns that is not being explained by our model. If you so choose, you can get the standard deviation of these, which is then going to give you an idea about idiosyncratic volatility. So let's just do that at the moment, and we'll be able to see what that's going to look like. So what we do is we use the standard deviation function here, which is relatively straightforward to use. So stdev.p. Now you could use population or sample here. Given the sheer number of observations, it really does not make any difference whatsoever, i.e. it's not going to be that informative whether you use population or sample here. I'll then select all of the residuals, and this is going to enable me to calculate the standard deviation of those residuals. In this case, that is about 0.01, or approximately 1.2% here. That itself is not terribly informative. It's only really informative when you compare that standardized residuals, or the standard deviation of the residuals rather, to other companies, in order to rank firms based on their idiosyncratic volatility. The idiosyncratic volatility itself is not necessarily that meaningful. So that is how you would go through getting the alpha and the beta in Excel. There are two ways to do it and it's relatively easy to do. 
Nevertheless, it's important to know both ways because they're useful in different circumstances. And sometimes you don't need the full regression output, in which case you can use the shortcut methods. But in other times, you might want the regression output. In either case, you can get alpha and beta relatively easily. So that's effectively how you'd go about doing it. I hope this video has been informative to you, and I hope to see you for future videos.